Investing and trading. What's the difference? Did you know that you don't need to have extreme intelligence to succeed in investing? Yep, you heard that right. Everyone thinks you have to be a genius to dabble in investing and have to be brilliant with numbers. That's actually not the case at all. Now that we've got your attention, let us show you the ins and outs of investing and trading, including their pros and cons. Let's get started. Investing and trading are two distinct approaches to profiting from the financial markets. Market participation is profitable for both investors and traders. Buying and holding, in general, are used by investors to achieve higher returns over a longer period of time. On the other hand, traders use both high and low markets to enter and leave positions more quickly, resulting in smaller, more regular profits. Investing Investing is the process of purchasing and holding a number of securities, baskets of stocks, index funds, bonds, and other investment instruments with the purpose of progressively building wealth over time. They are frequently held for years, if not decades, to take advantage of benefits such as interest and payouts. While markets vary, investors will ride out downtrends in the hope that prices will return and any losses would be recouped soon. In addition, market dynamics such as price-to-earnings ratios and corporate projections are often more important to investors. Trading Buying and selling stocks, commodities, currency pairings, and other products on a regular basis is what trading entails. The goal is to outperform a buy-and-hold investment in terms of returns, while investors may be satisfied with 10 to 15% annual profits, traders may strive for a 10% return each month, purchasing at a lower price and selling at a higher price within a short period of time. Generates trading profits. Trading profits can also be gained by offering at a higher price and purchasing to cover at a lower price to profit in falling markets, also known as selling short. While buy and hold investors are waiting for less profitable positions to mature, traders strive to profit quickly and frequently utilize a cautious stop loss order to shut out losing holdings at a predefined price level. To uncover high probability trading setups, traders frequently use technical analysis tools like moving averages and stochastic oscillators. Account size, amount of time available to trade, level of trading expertise, personality, and risk tolerance are all aspects that traders consider when deciding on their trading strategy. Pros and Cons of Investing The stock market has historically provided large returns to shareholders over time, but it also falls down, giving investors the opportunity for both profit and loss, as well as risk and return. Pros, it capitalizes on the economy's expansion. Corporate earnings rise in tandem with the economy. This is because economic expansion leads to the creation of jobs, which leads to the generation of income, and further leads to the generation of sales. The bigger the payment, the higher the customer demand, which means more money in the bank for the company. It's actually quite simple to acquire stocks on the stock market. You can get them via a stockbroker or a financial counselor, or you can buy them on the internet. You can even purchase shares in minutes after registering for an account. You don't need a great deal of money to get started investing in stocks. Most retail brokers offer commission-free stock trading. Fidelity, for example, does not have any account minimums. Provided the stock you wish to buy is out of your price range, you can buy additional shares if your broker allows it. There are two ways to make money. The majority of investors plan to buy low and sell high. They put their money into firms that are rapidly growing and increasing in value. This appeals to both day traders and long-term investors. The first group seeks to profit from short-term trends, while the second group expects the sales revenue and stock price to rise over time. They both feel they can outperform the market because of their stock picking abilities. Other investors would prefer a steady flow of funds. They invest in dividend-paying firms' equities. Those businesses expand at a steady pace.
you can sell your shares at any time on the stock market. The term liquid is used by economists to describe the ability to convert your shares into cash rapidly and with minimal fees. This is critical if you unexpectedly want funds. You incur the danger of having to take a loss because prices are volatile. Cons. It's possible that you'll lose your entire investment. Investors will sell a company's shares if it performs poorly, causing the stock price to collapse. You will lose your original investment if you sell. Bonds should be purchased if you cannot afford to give up your initial investment. If a firm goes bankrupt, preferred investors, bondholders, and creditors get paid first. However, this only occurs when a corporation goes bankrupt. If one company fails, a well-diversified portfolio should protect you. If you're buying stocks on your own, you'll need to investigate each firm beforehand to see how successful you think it will be. You'll need to learn how to interpret income reports and annual reports, as well as keep up with news about your company. You must also keep an eye on the stock market because even the best company's stock prices can collapse in a market crash. You may be able to earn a tax credit if you sell your shares at a loss. If you resell your share for a profit, however, you will be subject to capital gains taxes. Second by second, stock prices increase and tumble. Individuals are more likely to buy high and sell cheap out of greed and fear respectively. The best things to do is check in on a frequent basis rather than continually looking at stock price swings. Bottom line, investing. Investing in stocks has both advantages and disadvantages. Stocks have historically provided large returns over extended periods of time, but they also carry a high level of risk. In a process known as diversification, the risks of investing in stocks can be dispersed among numerous stocks, sectors, and locations. Pros and Cons of Trading Trading is sometimes misunderstood as a simple way to make money, but it is actually fairly complex and rewarding. It has become a popular job choice particularly for persons with a financial background due to its high volatility, 24-7 schedule, and ease of accessibility. Both fresh graduates and seasoned professionals could pursue trading as a profession because it allows them to be their own boss while also allowing them to make money from their laptops or mobile device. Pros The costs of trading might be quite cheap. In a real sense, there are no real charges because most brokers benefit from these spreads between currencies. There is no need to include separate brokerage charges which reduces overhead costs. When trading stocks or other securities, the brokerage arrangement varies greatly and a trader must account for such expenses. The markets are open 24 hours a day. Allowing traders to trade whenever they choose, which is highly convenient for short-term traders who take positions for a short period of time, only a small percentage of dealers trade during off hours. When trading in the FX market, it has the highest market valuation of daily transactions when compared to any other financial market. This provides the maximum level of liquidity allowing even huge orders for currency trades to be filled quickly and with little price variances. This reduces the chance of price manipulation and anomalies, allowing for narrower spreads and more efficient pricing. Traders don't have to be concerned by excessive volatility between opening and closing hours, or static price ranges in the afternoons, which are common features of equity markets. Unless large events are anticipated, similar cost patterns can be observed throughout non-stop trade. It has no centralized exchange or regulation because it is an over-the-counter market that operates globally. The central banks of many countries occasionally interfere when necessary, although these are uncommon occurrences that only occur in extreme circumstances. The majority of these improvements have already been anticipated and placed into the market. A decentralized and unregulated market like this helps to avoid any unpleasant surprises. The major currencies see large price movements on a regular basis. 
High volatility can help you make a lot of money if you place your transactions correctly. Cons, you are likely trading against professionals. Because the market is dominated by brokers, it may not be completely transparent. A trader may have little control over how his trade order is filled, may not receive the best price, or may only have limited access to trading quotes offered by his chosen broker. Dealing only with licensed brokers who are regulated by broker regulators is a straightforward approach. Regulators may not have authority over the market, but they do have control over the activity of brokers. Rates are shaped by a multitude of factors the most important of which are global politics and economics, which can be difficult to observe and draw meaningful conclusions from. The majority of trading is based on technical markers, which is the fundamental cause of the market's extreme volatility. A loss will ensue if the technicals are incorrect. The Greatest Investors Ben Graham, net worth $1.5 billion US dollars. As an asset manager and financial instructor, Ben Graham was exceptional. Among his many accomplishments, he wrote two investment masterpieces of unequaled importance. In addition, he is widely regarded as the founder of two important financial disciplines, risk analysis and value investing. The basis of Graham's value investing is that each investment should be worth significantly more than the amount paid for it. He was a firm believer in basic analysis and he looked for firms with large balance sheets, little debt, high profit margins, and plenty of cash flow. Jesse Livermore, net worth 1.5 billion US dollars. Jesse Livermore lacked formal education and had no prior experience trading stocks. He was a self-made businessman who learned from both his successes and failures. These successes and failures aided in the formation of investing ideas that can still be found in the market today. Livermore started trading for himself while he was in his teen years, and by the age of 16, he had reportedly made gains of over $1,000, which was a lot of money back then. Over the next few years, he made money by betting against bucket shops, which didn't perform actual deals, and instead let consumers gamble against the house on stock price swings. George Soros, net worth 8.6 billion US dollars. George Soros was an expert at turning broad economic patterns into highly leveraged winning bond and currency trades. Soros was a short-term trader when it came to investing, placing wagers in the direction of financial markets. George Soros launched the hedge fund firm Soros Fund Management in 1973, which later became the well-known and renowned Quantum Fund. He led this aggressive and profitable hedge fund for nearly two decades, reputedly generating annual returns of more than 30%, and on two instances, annualized returns of more than 100%. And there you have it, folks. Now that we have discussed the difference between investing and trading, let us know in the comment section down below your thoughts on it. Would you be interested in trying out either of them? Or do the risks make you have second thoughts about participating in these activities? Nevertheless, remember to always do your research and make the most out of your resources. If you found this video helpful, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this one. See you in the next video!